Later this hour, we hear from two women who have found home in the bluegrass and wouldn't have it any other way. Now, though, we hear from two women who find value in doing it yourself. First, Nancy Martindale from Danville speaks about the virtue of things you can't buy in a store. I believe in handmade, in hand-knit sweaters, dry-laid stone walls, pieced quilts, and homemade Christmas tree ornaments. They please the senses and remind us of those who made these objects from the materials they found at hand. By touching these things, we touch the hands of those who made them. Many of us choose to continue the tradition of making things by hand and of fixing and repairing them when they wear out. We value the old ways and seek satisfaction by using our hands to create beautiful and useful objects. Don't call me a crafter or crafty or even a craftsperson. I am proud to be a craftsman. The dictionary calls us highly skilled, painstaking, technically dexterous. I may be knitting a sweater, sewing a silk jacket, making a small shaker-style building of clay, or cutting a linoleum block for Christmas cards, but all will be done by my hands to the best of my ability. After all, the process is a large part of the joy of handmade. I find value and self-esteem in the things I make for my friends, family, for sale, or for myself. My father was a handyman who could do anything, at least in my young eyes. He was a college professor, so he had summers off, as well as most holidays and a month at Christmas. I looked forward to the projects we would do together during his time off. One project was making a small three-dimensional scale model in cardboard of our new house. Another time, my brother and I helped him build a fireplace on our screen porch. We buttered the bricks with mortar, and he stacked and leveled them in rows. So what if one side was a little taller than the other? We enjoyed many warm fires and toasted marshmallows on cool spring and summer evenings. These things may not be as perfect as ready-made or manufactured products, but that is part of their value. On a wall in our house are framed examples of handmade lace, including a fine linen handkerchief edged in needle lace made by my great-grandmother. It has a small, carefully darned hole in it, and I carried it in my wedding as my something old. I believe we will all be poorer in spirit if in the future there is no time or place for handmade things. They enrich our lives in so many ways. Nancy Martindale of Danville. It should be noted that she arrived at WEKU Studios wearing a vest and jewelry she crafted herself. Now we hear from another do-it-yourselfer, Lancaster resident Beth Dotson-Brown, who shares her belief in being green in order to preserve our earthmates of all colors. I believe that we are all part of the same body, and that means the actions I take affect you. When I was in my 20s, I went to work as a staff writer for Catholic Relief Services. I had never traveled outside of the United States, didn't even have a passport. But as someone who was to write about international emergency relief and development efforts, I needed to expand my world. I went to Benin, Togo, and Ghana for two weeks with a small group to visit the organization's work and report on it. As we drove the bumpy roads, we visited health clinics, schools, and orphanage. Everywhere we went, we spent time getting to know the people and learning about their situations. We gathered near a school and sipped milk from the coconuts our hosts offered us as a village chief asked for help repairing a well. It would cost $100, a sum far beyond their reach. At a boarding school, students beamed as they showed us the rabbits they had learned to care for. Their skills could increase their family's income. In another village, people who had been shunned because of their leprosy grasped the hands we offered, rejoicing in our visit and sharing their beautiful artwork. Everywhere, I felt that even though I lived so far from these people, there was still some way that my life connected to theirs. They were influencing me. I felt the joy of friendships based on the sharing of stories. Even when we had to rely on a translator, we formed a bond that I sensed was changing me. Then we went to a former slave trading fort in Benin. We toured the historic buildings with a local guide. 
In one small room, I saw the same drawings I had seen in school books of slaves lying head to toe on a ship. The guide focused on me, the only woman in the stuffy space. He pointed to the drawing. Your sisters, he said, were raped and beaten on those ships. My sisters. Something trembled deep within me as the words echoed. I knew he was right. Whether living across the ocean or the street, they were all part of my family. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. I add to that, regardless of where they live. Today I understand so much more than I did during that trip 23 years ago. We are connected by natural resources, agricultural produce, manufactured products. Art, ideas, and dreams swirl among us, morphing as the wind blows them from one society to another. When I use the water in my sink, I do it sparingly, knowing there are people who don't have enough. I primarily eat vegetables I grow in my backyard, not only because it's healthier, but because it diminishes pollution caused by transportation. I recycle much, compost what I can, and put little out for the garbage service, aware that at times we have paid poor countries and communities to bury our toxic refuse. I remember my brothers and sisters in prayer. I've tried to simplify my life so I can be a peaceful member of the world family of which I believe we are all a part. Beth Dotson Brown of Lancaster. I'm Nicole Robinson Carroll, and you're listening to This We Believe from listener-supported public radio WEKU. During this program, we've heard from women who value work, relationships, and other things that bring strength and value to their lives. Now we take a look at what home means. We hear first from essayist Anna Weitz of Frankfurt, who's not really from around here, but shh. Don't tell her I told you. I believe we all need somewhere to call home. My mother was a traveler. We lived on three continents by the time I was five. She searched for meaning and art and experiences. I wanted a hearth like those in storybooks, with rocks stacked by great-grandfathers and firewood from trees planted by an ancestor. I looked for my home in London, where the weight of history made pieces of brick crumble into the street. I searched for home in Kenya, under a sky so flat it seemed to go on forever, baking trays of tiny fish grandmothers fed babies strapped to their hips. I asked the sawgrass of Florida, scratching the tips of my sneakers, and the lush green leaves of madrone trees in California, are you what home looks like? When I met my husband, he told me not to marry him unless I was willing to move to eastern Kentucky, back to where his grandmothers lived. The first two years were hard. I was an outsider, classified by all who met me as not from here. I would come home each evening and complain about standing in line while the clerk chatted aimlessly with the customer in front of me about church news or the health of neighbors. One day, registering the car and sharing stories, I looked behind me at the irritated face of someone not from here, and I realized, hey, I am from here. That small town wove me into the daily patterns of its life without me even noticing. My neighbors were my friends. My husband's grandmother was my mama. My children walked the streets where their father grew up and sat on church pews emblazoned with their grandfather's initials. But it wasn't that which made it home. It was the courage of the women who made beautiful quilts out of hand-me-down rags, the fierce pride of those who survived hardship for generations and had the stories to prove it. The humor of people who came through the worst, decade after decade, and still thought life was pretty darn funny. The way they reached out to me and made me whole. And did I mention that my home is beautiful? That there is nothing more gorgeous than the speed with which velvet evening covers the hills? Nothing more magical than dew glowing on red bud branches? or ice sparkling on limbs dipping into the creek. Most of all, though, home is where I belong. I don't live there right now, having traded a small town for the state capital, blue jeans for suits, at least temporarily, but it's still my home. 
so much so that when I drive up the interstate and come around the curve leading to the first of the hills marking eastern Kentucky, I can't breathe for all the happiness that wells up in my heart. I may still be a traveler, but now I know I have a home. No matter what, I can walk in the door of the Louisa Courthouse tomorrow or 20 years from now, and we will pick up talking about the news of the day as if I never left. Anna White's of Frankfurt. Lynn Thompson of Richmond believes that home isn't about a place. It's about the people who are there with you. I used to believe that home is where you hang your hat. This is what my grandfather always said. I believed this because as a child and a young adult, that was home. My home was where my parents moved with my three sisters and me. Home was where I followed my then husband time after time. Home was a place to sleep, a place to eat, and where I kept my things. Home was where I hung my hat. I no longer believe this. Since moving to Richmond nearly seven years ago, I have seen many changes in my life, changes I never could have imagined a decade ago. I remarried. I gave birth to my daughter. I re-enrolled in college. I lost my mom. My husband, my other half, my companion, my support, my best friend. He gave love and support when I felt like I didn't deserve it. He made me see that I did. He gave me the confidence I needed to return to school after more than a decade of feeling I wasn't good enough, smart enough, or special enough to make it. He is my home. My daughter and my two sons, my joy, my most difficult but most fulfilling challenge and the loves of my life. These beautiful young children are my soulmates. They, above all others, are the ones with whom I am meant to spend my life. I watch them grow and change. I watch them learn, succeed, and sometimes fail. I help them pick up their pieces, and I kiss their wounds. I learn more from them than I ever could from any book. They are my home. Eastern Kentucky University, where I try to pin down my hopes and my dreams, the place I go every week to drill knowledge into my head. I have learned more at EKU than I ever could have imagined. I met some of the most wonderful and supportive people of my life. I made what I am sure will be lifelong friends and those who will be lifelong role models. I learned what I want to be when I grow up. Most importantly, I learned my self-worth, my home away from home. My mother, my longest friend, the one person who knew more about me than any other, the one person with whom I could argue one second and agree the next. She gave me life. She shared her love of Kentucky through my youth, always trying to get back, to go home. She is now forever home. Home is no longer just a place to hang my hat. Home is a place where there are friends wherever I go. It is a place where my dreams, hopes, love, and spirit are alive, where they thrive. This is home. This, I believe. Lynn Thompson of Richmond.